The time has come. We have found the first traces of life in space. The James Webb Telescope has discovered a planet that is even more suitable for life than Earth. Biomarkers in the atmosphere of the exoplanet K2-18b indicate that this world is covered by a superlative ocean. But how can we now find out whether intelligent life exists there? Can James Webb and others provide clues? And if so, could we ever reach K2-18b? The search for exoplanets is in full swing. James Webb, the new star telescope in the night sky, is not only supposed to search for the beginning of time, but also to take a closer look at exoplanets. We have only been able to detect other planets in space since 1995. They are so tiny that our telescopes were simply not good enough to find these planets. Take a look at this image of Earth taken by Voyager 1 in the early 1990s. A dot, nothing more. And Voyager 1 was still within the solar system, just 6 billion kilometers from Earth. It's at least 41.32 trillion kilometers to the nearest stars in the Alpha Centauri system. I think that gives you an idea of how tiny planets are in the vastness of the cosmos. Tracking them down has long been like detective work. Scientists use a trick for this. The tiny planets become visible when they pass in front of their stars. This type of exoplanet detection is called the transit method. Another method determines the presence of planets in a solar system with the help of minute gravitational shifts that the planets cause in the movements of their stars. Both methods are not always entirely reliable, but we have certainly been able to identify more than 5,000 exoplanets. If we want to know whether there are worlds among them that are similar to ours, the next hurdle is that it has not yet been possible to determine parameters such as the presence of an atmosphere or water. We could only get a rough idea of whether they were heavier and massive rocky planets or less dense gas giants. Since James Webb has been in use, this has changed because this super telescope can use the light reflections of a planet to determine exactly whether water and other biomarkers are present. You can imagine how much joy there was when James Webb found signs of life in the atmosphere of an exoplanet for the first time. Methane and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of K2-18b The James Webb Space Telescope is a true masterpiece of modern astronomy. With some of the most advanced instruments ever sent into space, the JWST has the unique ability to detect and analyze exoplanets. The wealth of data and precise measurements go far beyond the wildest dreams of scientists. At the forefront of the equipment is the Near Infrared Camera, or NIRCAM for short, which was specially designed for observations in the Near Infrared range. This eye of the telescope is capable of capturing the faintest light signals from stars in distant galaxies and is the key to identifying exoplanets, orbiting their stars. The near-infrared spectrograph, NearSpec, breaks down the light from stars and planets into its individual colors, and from this spectral analysis, we can understand the chemical composition of exoplanets and their atmospheres. Every element and every gas has its own individual light signature which James Webb can capture and analyze even over enormous distances. Thanks to this technical miracle, we can now peer into the atmospheres of distant worlds and reveal their secrets. The mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, refines the capabilities even further and provides information on wavelength ranges of light that would never be visible to the human eye. MIRI can detect the thermal radiation of cooler objects such as newly formed stars or dusty disks around young stars, determine the heat of exoplanets, and possibly even understand weather phenomena on these planets. Now let's look at the surprising data James Webb found around K2-18b. Analysis of the planet's data has revealed clear evidence for the presence of carbonaceous molecules, including methane and carbon dioxide. Carbon is a key element of life and is considered by biologists to be the backbone of all known life forms on Earth. The presence of carbon-containing molecules in the atmosphere of a planet or moon could therefore be an indication of biological processes. Methane is a simple molecule consisting of one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. On Earth, methane is mainly produced by biological processes such as digestive activities or decomposition processes. Although methane can also be produced by some geological processes, its presence in a planet's atmosphere is a strong indication of possible biological activity. 
we all exhale carbon dioxide. It's also produced en mass in industry. But in relation to this planet, it could be an indication of cellular respiration and therefore another biomarker. CO2 alone is not necessarily evidence of life. It can also be released in large quantities by non-biological processes such as volcanism. But if we take a closer look at K2-18b, we can quickly rule out volcanism as the cause. In the search for life, the ratio of carbon dioxide to the other gases in the atmosphere is crucial. If several biomarkers occur in combination, the chance that life exists there increases. Rich life on Hycean planets. Imagine a world about 2.6 times the size of our home planet and covered by a single vast ocean. These are the Hycean worlds, which represent a completely new category of planets and fascinate researchers. Hycean water worlds are technically known as sub-Neptunian planets. James Webb discovered large quantities of water and a hydrogen-rich atmosphere on K2-18b. This suggests that this planet is home to a vast ocean and possibly life. The exoplanet, which has 8.6 times the mass of Earth, orbits the cool dwarf star K2-18 within the habitable zone and is 120 light-years away from Earth. Its size is between Earth and Neptune, and the abundance of methane and carbon dioxide and the lack of ammonia support the hypothesis that K2-18b has a water ocean beneath a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. James Webb found another exciting clue. A molecule called dimethyl sulfide, or DMS for short. On Earth, DMS is only produced by life. Most of the DMS in the Earth's atmosphere comes from phytoplankton in marine environments. Upcoming Webb observations should confirm these data once again, and then we will probably know with great certainty that biological life is present on K2-18b. This could be simple life forms such as plankton, algae, and microorganisms, but complex life such as fish or aquatic mammals are also possible. Last but not least, we must always consider the possibility that there are life forms on other planets that we cannot even imagine. Even on a planet completely covered by water, higher life forms could exist that may have adapted to life in water. Whether K2-18b has land masses is still unclear. It is indeed difficult to determine from a distance. What is exciting in this context, however, is that James Webb's MIRI instrument would be able to detect artificial light emissions such as those emitted by cities on a distant planet. That's an exciting thing and will greatly advance our search for other life forms in space. K2-18b was not discovered by James Webb. The first insights into the atmospheric properties of this exoplanet came from observations with the Hubble Space Telescope. These data were so promising that researchers were keen to take another look at this world with the new telescope and the spirit of the research was rewarded. The analyses around K2-18b are fascinating and possibly our first discovery of traces of life in space. This is a sensation, as we have been searching for other forms of life for almost 100 years and so far in vain. Nowhere in our solar system have life forms been found. Only the distant icy moons orbiting Jupiter and Saturn are still considered possible places to find them. According to researchers, Hycean exoplanets could be true superworlds and birthplaces of rich life. Life on Earth also began in water. Land masses and mammals only emerged much later. If the Earth had remained a water planet, intelligent life forms living entirely in water might also have developed there. Traditionally, the search for life in space has focused on exoplanets, which, like Earth, are smaller, rocky planets. The larger Hycean worlds are now considered to be the real superworlds in the cosmos, although not all researchers are so optimistic. They also consider it possible that the oceans on these planets are too hot to be habitable or liquid. In this case, the Hycean worlds would be more like gigantic steam baths. But life forms in hot and toxic thermal pools in Yellowstone Park have proven to us that life is possible even there. A probe to K2-18b. Of course, there is still the exciting question of whether we can ever really find out whether the exoplanet K2-18b is inhabited or not. If we were to find evidence of intelligent life somewhere in space, we would naturally want to make contact. 
K2-18b is about 124 light years away from Earth. This distance still represents an enormous challenge for our space travel at the moment. It takes our probes years to reach destinations that are several million or billion kilometers away. A planet 124 light years away, and even one only four light years away, would not realistically be within our reach. At least not with a probe or spacecraft. Our Voyager probes, sent out in the 1970s, will reach the nearest star systems in a few thousand years. If we wanted to make contact with a species somewhere in the cosmos, we would have to get inventive. The prospect of finding Earth-like planets in our neighboring star system, Proxima Centauri, inspired space geek Yuri Milner to design nano spaceships that can be accelerated to almost the speed of light. These mini probes, equipped with a camera, are expected to cover the distance of several trillion kilometers in a few years and deliver photographs of planets that may harbor life. If we were to find a civilization in space, our scientists would probably come up with completely new ideas. Ultimately, it is precisely such goals that drive our spirit of research and innovation. If one day we had warp drive and could move through the universe by folding space-time, traveling to worlds like K2-18b would no longer be a problem. But at the moment, our space shuttles still operate within the parameters of Newtonian physics and acceleration through propellants and fuels. Even if we could build a spaceship traveling at 10% of the speed of light, the journey to K2-18b would still take 1,240 years. Even a radio signal traveling at the speed of light would take 124 years to cover the distance between Earth and this exoplanet. If a reply were to arrive, it would arrive another 124 years later. Subscribe to the channel now and be part of every new video hit.